What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters. In today's video, we're going to be looking at an EOC and FSA review on slope. Really hope this video is helpful for you guys. In problem number one, guys, we have an inequality that is shaded on a graph and they're asking us to write the equation for it. First thing we need to know is that the equation is going to take the form y is equal to mx plus b, right? And we're going to replace that equal sign with an inequality sign later on. So we look at the graph and we notice that our intercept, the y-intercept is 2. So we know that y, or should I say, yeah, the y-intercept is equal to positive 2. Now when we go back, we're trying to figure out points that we could use on the graph to identify the slope. So we could use the y-intercept. We could use the point above at 1, 5. Or we could use the point negative 1, comma, negative 1 down at the bottom. Either way, guys, it doesn't matter which two points we pick. We're going to get the same slope. So when I calculate my rise over run, we're going to go down 1, 2, 3 over 1. And that's going to give us a slope of positive 3. Now, when we put this back together, our inequality is going to be y is greater than 3x plus 2. And the reason why we have the greater than sign is because our line is not solid and they shaded above. So now that we got our equation, we got the y-intercept, let's determine if they shaded in the right region. And to do this, we're going to plug in the point zero, zero. If we plug this point in and we get a true statement, then we know they shaded in the wrong area. If we get a false statement, that means that they shaded in the correct area. And this is what I mean. So when we use the point zero, zero, that's what we're plugging into the equation for X and Y. So we're saying that zero is greater than three times zero plus two. And when we simplify more, we're saying that zero is greater than positive two. We know that this is false. So I would shade the region that does not include zero, zero, which they did. So we know that this is absolutely correct. But problem number two is going to be a tad bit different compared to the first problem. As we're looking at problem number two, everyone, we have to notice two things. One, this line is slanting downwards. So this lets me know that I'm more than likely going to have a negative slope. And number two, we have a solid line. So my sign is either going to be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. So let's go through and solve. So we know that the uh, y-intercept, negative one, when we pick another point on the graph, I'm going to get a rise over run of negative 1 over 2. So my slope, negative 1 over 2. Now as we go ahead to put this together, what we're going to have is y is less than or equal to negative 1 half x minus 1. All right, so when we look at this, guys, just remember, they shaded under this line. So because they shaded under this line, we're going to have the less than or equal to sign. If they shaded above the line, then we would have had a different inequality sign, which would have been greater than or equal to. So in this problem, I'm going to pick a point inside the shaded region. So let's say we look at this pink dot right here on 0, negative 2. So if this is a true statement, they shaded correctly. If not, it's false. So let's see what happens when we shade in 0, negative 2. So we have y is negative 2, and this is less than or equal to negative 1 half times 0 minus 1. So once we look at this, we have negative 2 is less than or equal to negative 1, and this is a true statement. So because it's true, we should be shading in that region that has the point and they did so, so we're all okay with this problem. But in problem number three now, guys, what we're going to be working with is standard form and switching it into slope-intercept form. 
So in the next three examples, guys, we're working with a standard equation, right? That follows the form AX plus BY is equal to C. And we want to get it to slope intercept form. Y is equal to MX plus B. And the way that we do this, I know that the uh, there's different variables, but it's all there. When we look at the standard form, we basically want to get the Y by itself. So let's look at our first example. We have 6X plus 3Y is equal to 18 and we know the objective is to get y by itself so all the first step is always going to be to move the x variable that ax so we subtract and we're going to have 3y is equal to negative 6x plus 18. now to get y by itself guys we just divide by 3 we divide 6x by 3 and 18 by 3. please make sure you divide everything by 3 Sometimes students forget to div div divide everything and that can mess our problem up. So right here now we have y is equal to negative 2x plus 6. And we are done with this problem. To graph, y-intercept is 6. And then we use our slope to get the second point. Now let's say if we went over to student B and we switch to red now. So we're on student B. And this student has 8x minus 2y is equal to 40. Biggest difference here, guys, is just to understand that our y is negative. So just please make sure you take that into account, especially when we're dividing. So after we subtract 8x, we're going to have negative 2y is equal to negative 8x plus 40. And now when we divide by negative 2, just remember these two negative signs. So y is positive. Negative 8 divided by negative 2 gives us a positive 4. And at the end, once we divide again by negative 2, we are going to get a negative or minus 20 at the end. So please just make sure when you are solving these type of problems that you move the x variable first and that you always divide by that number in front of y to get y absolutely by itself. Now let's say we go back to uh, student C. So now we're on C and it's the same thing. The process is very repetitive, but what we want to do is to always get this by itself. Can we divide early if we want to? Yes, we can. So let's say everybody wanted to divide by two from the initial step. So if we did that, we would have 5x plus y is equal to 4, all right? So now we already have y by itself. Let's move our 5x to the other side. So once we do that by subtracting, we'll have y is equal to negative 5x plus 4. And this is how you convert from standard form to slope-intercept form. In our next problem, what we're going to be looking at is identifying key aspects of a parabola. So when we look at this, guys, they're asking us for the axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry comes specifically from the vertex, right? Because the axis of symmetry cuts this parabola in half, as you can see. And what when we look at this vertex, the axis of symmetry is the x coordinate. So when we write the coordinate for this point, we know x is negative 1 and y is going to be negative 8. So for this answer, we'll just put x is equal to negative 1. Now when we talk about the y-intercept, very simple. Where the graph crosses the y-axis, we know that it crosses that y-axis at the point 0, negative 6. So now we move on from the vertex. We got the y-intercept. Now we're going to be talking about the roots, solutions to the parabola. And basically, that is just the x-intercept. So when I go up here and I look at these two dots on the x-axis where it crosses the x-axis, these are the roots or the x-intercepts. So we would put a solution set, right? The brackets. Oops, sorry guys, my that, that bracket was really ugly. So we're gonna put our brackets as negative three 
and positive one. Just wanted to double check real quick. And that's it. So now when we talk about our domain, we're saying, hey, what X values are going to be included in this graph? And it can be tricky if you don't understand domain, but just remember that this graph, as it extends and goes up, you know, as you follow the graph, it's going to expand wider and wider across that X axis. So we would say that this is going to be all real numbers. Right, because it's going to cover that whole X axis. Now, when we go over to the range, we're specifically talking about the Y. And what I want you guys to understand, let's just erase some of this, is that there is not going to be any Y values under this vertex, right? Because that's basically where the graph starts. So how will we express that as an answer? Well, we'd have an inequality and we'd say that Y is going to be greater than or equal to negative eight. There is no other Y value that is going to be included unless it's either negative eight or greater. And with that, what we're going to do now is go on to our last problem of the day. And like I said, we really hope you found this video helpful. If you have, just smash the like button for us. It just lets us know that we're providing you guys great value and content in these videos. So in our last problem of the day, we have a word problem. And it says that Jessica is a housekeeper. For each house she cleans, she charges a base fee plus an hourly charge for labor. And it tells us that the information is in the table. But the most important thing is that it's asking us what is the rate Vanessa charges. So guys, this is just basically asking for the average rate of change. And the formula that we'd have to use for this would be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, right? And just make sure that your variables line up, meaning that your x is your independent variable and your y is your dependent variable. That's just the biggest thing. So when I set this up, right, we're going to have $165 minus $60. So that's the Y for four hours versus one. Then we're going to go back and have the hours. Four hours minus one. And this is how we find the average rate of change. And once we do this, we're going to get 105 on top over three. Once we divide this fraction even further, we're going to get our final answer, which is going to be the $35. So we know that per hour, Vanessa's going to charge $35 per hour. And with this, guys, really hope you guys have enjoyed this video today. Thank you guys so much for joining us on Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let us know if you guys had comments or questions on future videos. Thank you guys for joining.